Welcome everybody to Monday Night Live. My name's Derek Carden and tonight I have uh, from Sunderland in England, Jeff Ram. Jeff is one of the top speakers in the UK. In fact, he's one of the top speakers in the world on customer service, on keynote speaking, speaks all over the world and has spoken in six continents. Um, and I saw Jeff in Dallas uh, bring the house down at the National Speaking Association conference uh, two and a half years ago. I was privileged to be there. Let me tell you just a little bit about Jeff. Jeff and I spoke on Zoom three weeks ago to the uh, Chartered Institute of Management Accounting Conference. I got to close the uh, first day and Jeff got to close the second day. The person that closes the second day gets paid a lot more money than the guy that put that uh, closes the first day. So I'm still pretty sore about that, but Jeff's a good pal of mine. We've worked together on the, in the Professional Speaking Association for uh, five years, and he's a great guy. Jeff uh, mm -hmm. got into customer services because he was working in cars, and I've been wondering what somebody who was working in cars in Sunderland uh, on customer service uh, is doing really, traveling the world and speaking and writing books. And we'll find out about that in a minute. If you follow Jeff on Instagram, you will see that he sent out all sorts of Christmas cards. I've got one here. And to the ladies, they get a big pack of dairy milk uh, chocolate because the uh, lady loves milk tray. So you can tell us a bit about that as well, Jeff, because looking after people who look after you is one of the secrets of Christmas. So if you're there, Jeff, welcome to Monday Night Live. Thanks for joining us for a second or even third time. And uh, tell us how you got into the speaking business. Ah, uh, Derek. Uh, well, welcome, everybody. Good to see you all again. I think this is my third appearance. Is this my third appearance? Do I get to keep you now, Derek, after three? You get a, it's a hat trick, Jeff, which is not what Sunderland very often score in football. But let's not talk football. Let's talk about uh, celebrity service and your books. <laughs> okay, so how did I, you, the first question there, how did I get into speaking? Um, so I've, I've had my own business now for almost 20 years. It'll be 20 years on the 1st of March, 2022. Um, so I've been professionally speaking in my own jeffram.com thing uh, for th about 13 years now, about 13 years. And um, prior to that, had my own business in the Northeast. And prior to that, I was marketing manager of a, road, of a motor retail group in the northeast of England. So I was in charge of the marketing, but also the customer service for customers, you know, how to entice customers in and how to look after them. So I was managing a team. Before that, Derek, I was um, an advisor on customer service and also marketing for startup businesses. Um, one of the startup businesses that I worked with and helped to launch and helped to work with for for Quite a, quite a long time, uh, with somebody who a lot of you might know is uh, Sarah Davies from Crafters Companion, who has just finished her stint on Strictly and who uh, is now a current dragon on Dragon's Den. So I was working with businesses, small businesses, back in the early day. And my enterprise lecturer, Derek, at Sunderland University, who we kept in contact with, he contacted me uh, randomly out of the blue. And he said, Jeff, we, we want, I want to invite you to this event at the university. I said, OK. And he said, we've got a motivational business guru coming in to the university. I said, I said a, a what? He said, a motivational business guru. And it's a Barclays event. Here's a one for you, Derek. It was a Barclays event. And he says, I'm inviting everybody. I said, but, but I've left the university. I've left for two or three years now. He said, no, no, you're alumni. I'm inviting everybody to come back from your year. I thought, oh, what a business. Now this is before Google. Some of you might remember before Google. So I couldn't type in motivational business guru, but I went, I went. I was the only person out of my entire year to go back to university, sit in the back of the lecture theater. The lecture theater is called 007. How good is that? And I'm, sat, I'm sat at the back. And on walks a gentleman called Tom Edge, um, who was this business motivational guru. And he had two uh, marker pens, two flip charts, and he just banged out tips, ideas, stories, tips, ideas, stories. And I was just bowled over, Derek, for 90 minutes. 
And I came out of that lecture theatre and I came, I came home to my wife, Haley and I said, I would love to do this. She said, do what? I said, speak. I said, what do you mean? I said, well, I've just seen this guy. Absolutely brilliant. Barclays have given him money. He's travelled all the way from West Bromwich to be here in Sunderland. And I said, I'd love to do this. And Haley said, well, what would you speak on? I said, well, the two things that I love marketing and customer service and that was the very first seed Derek of me becoming a speaker uh, 13 years ago I launched my own brand jeffram.com I went along with my very first PSA meeting um, the rest as this is history met you met Will met some amazing people and um, if somebody told me all those years ago having that dream of seeing that person and thinking oh I'd love to do this if somebody had said I would speak in 44 countries, have written four books and doing the things that I do every day, I would have thought they were mad. But that is the state of play. And here we are. Here we are in December, almost in lockdown four, and we're ready to go again. And there's a fabulous message there for anybody watching this on YouTube or um, listening to this on the podcast. If you dream and follow your dream, anything can happen and four books Jeff and I'm uh, just flicking through yet again your celebrity service superstars and I think you're going to show us a few slides and a few fantastic bits of service that you've seen when you've traveled the world is yeah. now a good is now a good time to put the uh, put the slides up would you like the slides I'll, I'll, here's the slides here we go here we go Derek Arden 2021 here we have it here we go so for those of you who are wondering, that is actually water, not gin. But if, if you want it to be gin, it can be gin or vodka. So enjoy the ice. So my topic, uh, my subject is customer service, customer experience. Um, but my topic is something called celebrity service. This is what I specialize in. This is my brand. This is what I do. And people say, well, what's the difference between celebrity service and and Customer service, you know, the service that we know and we, we've been taught so many years. Derek, there's been nothing new in the world of customer service for four decades. Just about every speaker, every trainer, every manual you flick through, every book you've ever read will tell you two things. Two things in order for your organization, your business or yourself. Two things for you to do to become the number one in your field, the number one in your sector. And every book, manual, trainer, speaker will say the same two things. The first is this. Number one, you must always go the extra mile. Really inspiring stuff, okay? Second thing is you must always exceed expectations. It's the same old, same old, go the extra mile, exceed expectations. There's nothing new in the world of customer service. But I think I found something. And this is what's called celebrity service. And this is what I write about. This is what I deliver uh, virtually, but also in, in person at events all over the world. So what I thought I'd do today is, um, I suppose, just share a few stories, a few ideas that I've had that, that's in the new book, but things that I hope would resonate and get, and get people thinking about delivering a different level of service. So right now you're delivering a high level of service. Everybody does. But what happens if a celebrity would have become your next customer, your next guest, your next member, your next passenger? And if they were an A-list celebrity, an A-list celebrity, what would you say? What would you do? How would you react? What would be the difference? Right now, you're delivering a high level of service, okay? But if a celebrity were to tweet, email, walk through your door, pick up the phone, become your next customer, your service levels go to there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the gap. The gap you don't realize is, exists within yourself, within your department, within your organization. But it's a gap that if you can fill, there is not a competitor in your marketplace can touch you for the service and experience you could deliver starting from today. So... Celebrity service. Celebrity is the philosophy, which we can talk a lot about later on, Derek, but celebrity, I broke it down. I have hundreds of stories and I broke it down so it was manageable and people could easily grasp it within a business. Celebrity stands for consistency, 
excitement, love, engagement, bravado, response, independence, thank you, and you and your team. And what I do is I group all my stories together, Derek, as, as you know, into these groups to deliver for clients. Now, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> On occasions, I've used love. Okay, the L in celebrity is love. I've never used it so much as in the last 18 months. When I first started to write celebrity, when I started to write L, a couple of my very good friends, they said, what's L going to be, Jeff? I said, sorry. They said, is it going to be loyalty? You must call it loyalty. And I said, no. And they said, why not? I said, because it's too obvious. They said, what's it going to be? I said, I think I'm going to call it love. And they said, oh, right, we get it. You, you love your customers. They love you. Everybody's happy. I said, no. I said, love is when something goes wrong. Things always go wrong. Okay? It's having that ability, that creativity, that, that mindset to see an opportunity to put it right. Okay? To spin it on its head. And I said, you always find one or two people in any organization that love it when things go wrong. So what I thought I'd do today is, is dedicate the last 18 months and, and certainly some of the stories in the book to, to love. Um, and that's what I'm going to share with you today. But I thought I'd start because we had a good 10 minute conversation with everybody about the world of football. We had we heard about Arsenal and, and Sunderland and all these wonderful teams. Um, but I have another love, Derek, another love, uh, football, but a football Tim will possibly know a little bit more than anybody. And that's American football. So from about the age of, I don't know, eight years old, Channel 4 here in the UK first broadcast American football, the NFL. And myself and a couple of, a couple of friends at school, we just fell in love with American football. And my, my team that I chose back in the day were, were the Oakland Raiders, and then they moved to LA, and then they moved uh, to, to Las Vegas. And we all picked our team, and I, I go to the games now in... Um, down in Twickenham or, or Tottenham the other week, and, and certainly down at Wembley. So I thought I'll start there. I'll start there. We'll have a conversation about football. But yes, Derek, I um I had to put this on. Let me let me see. There you go. Bit of bit of bit of normal football. Derek and I just the other week, uh, six pound twenty a pint. That's how you stay in the Premier League. But let me take you back to an event that Derek and I did in in Dallas. Now. This in the background is the Dallas Cowboys Stadium. I believe at the time was the most expensive stadium ever built, I believe. Now, whenever I go to America and speak in America, I like to buy a souvenir because my, my, I, love, I love American football, but I like to buy a souvenir. My office is full of souvenirs of places I've been to. So yes, been to Los Angeles and uh, spoke in Philadelphia. And every city I go to, I get the, the helmet from that city so i thought we're in dallas i've got to go get myself a helmet but i also want to do the stadium tour the stadium tour and not only from a football perspective and something a passion that i have but i'm also interested in the business learnings wherever i go and picking up nuggets picking up ideas and people's different mindsets to sales negotiation leadership customer service so here we are at the, um, the AT&T Stadium in Dallas. Uh, phenomenal. Phenomenal. It makes Wembley look like a shed. Okay. If I ever speak for Wembley, I, I won't mention that. So we went on the tour. And I'm the only Brit there. And I'm sat with all of the Americans. We're all on this tour. And uh, it was just phenomenal. And we were all asking questions. This is their jumbo screen. This is their jumbo screen, and it looks big, but it doesn't give you the actual size here. So we asked, how big is this screen? It's the largest indoor screen in the world. If you turn it on its side, it's a seven-story building. Wow. Wow. That's the size of your TV, Derek, at home, I believe. Just, just That's a bit. absolutely right, Jeff. Yeah. The remote Thank control you. the remote controls the size of your house. I thought, wow, that is impressive. So they, they, but it's stunning, absolutely. It's like, it's incredible, right? I was like, wow. So I, we're sat watching this screen and it's pixel perfect. It's like, oh my word. And they said, so we're asking questions. Any questions? Any? And somebody said, what's the, what's the uh, capacity 
And the lady who was very informative, she said, oh, we have 80,000 here, but we can, we can go up to 90,000. <laughs> well, you just, you just, just get 10,000 seats from somewhere. She says, if you look under your seat right now, the seats are a little bit different. They're not, they're not, they're on bars, they're on iron rods. And she says, your armrests here, what we do when you two or when Taylor Swift come to town and we, we, can, we, we need to sell more tickets, we take the armrests off and we bunch the seats together and we can get an extra 10,000 seats. Now, Derek, the Emirates Stadium and the Stadium of Light are very, very wonderful stadium. We've never even thought of this. It was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Now, on one, behind uh, one of the goals, uh, they are sponsored by Ford. And again, I was like, oh, that's great, that's Ford. In this country, and indeed the world, we, we would just have the logo, the brand. Dallas think a little bit differently. When they did the deal with Ford, they've got, as you can see, a mini showroom. So fans are walking around, they're actually seeing the product. It is another level. It is without doubt another level when it comes to sales and marketing and the way they think and the mindset. But what I wanted to really tell you was love. And when things go wrong, putting them right. So with 20 minutes to go, the, uh, the host of the, uh, the tour, she said, right, we've got 20 minutes left before we close. If you want to come down to the, uh, sort of the dressing rooms, you can. Or if you want to go to the store and buy some last minute gifts, you've got a choice. And of course, I want to buy a helmet. I want to buy a helmet. So I went off to the store. The store is something else. And I picked up the helmet and I picked up some things for Grace and Elliot for our children. And I've got a handful of stuff and I'm in the queue for the till and I'm third in the queue. Then I'm second. Then I get to the front. And at that precise moment, there was a flicker of electricity. There was a little surge, a little, just the lights went on and off for a second. But it put out all of their systems. And the lady looked at me, she said, oh, thank you very much, sir. Um, our systems have just gone down. We can't take card payment. However, we can still take cash. Guess who's the only person in Dallas without cash? And I was like, I haven't, I haven't got a dollar. I, I said, I just want to, and she's already oh, can come back tomorrow. I said, I, I said, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm fly tomorrow. I can't make it. She said, not a problem. Would you like to go on a secret tour? I was like, okay. And she got another colleague, another member of colleague from the store. Could you help this gentleman? Can we take him on the secret tour? So we went around the back, went into the storeroom. Nobody had seen that before. Went into the back offices. Nobody had seen that on the tour before. We went up the stairs, around the, around the, the, the side, down the stairs, threw out into the foyer where the Ford, where the cars are again. I thought, I'm back in the stadium. We walked around. We walked further around. And about 100 metres down the, this path was a bank machine. It was a card machine. There you go, sir. You can take out as much cash as you want. I was like... So I put the card in, got the cash. We did the secret tour all the way back. And when I got to the till, she said, because you've had the hassle of walking to get cash, I've took 20% off everything. No more problem, is there? There's no more problem. How many of us would have to fight to get a discount? It would never happen. At best, you would get 10%. The Dallas Cowboys, and particularly this team, saw an opportunity. Would you like to go on a secret tour? Yes. It was just a different path to getting cash. But then the best bit, Derek, was just at the end, and we've took 20% off everything. I leave there happy. There wasn't an issue in the first place. So I wanted to start um, this, this, this brief talk today just with showing you what can happen and what we can do differently. So that was in a time when we could travel. And Derek and I would fly to Dallas and have some great fun and have a couple of drinks and um, collect stories. And um, I've never used love so much in the last 80 months. I mentioned this before. And um, things will always go wrong. 
but it never included a pandemic. That's just a little bit too big. However, did we see opportunities as organizations, as businesses, as people to deliver a greater level of service? The answer is yes, we have great, great examples. I, I know that. But there are three things that organizations and businesses purchased, three things in the last 80 months, three big things. First, masks. Masks. We need to buy masks. So everybody had to buy as much PPE masks as they could just to go about their normal everyday uh, life. But then after a couple of months, whoa, ooh, ooh, we get a logo, we get a logo on our mask and we turned into a little bit of a branding exercise. Clever. So that was the first one, masks. The second, hand sanitizer. And millions upon millions of hand sanitizing stations went up in offices and retail, uh, train stations, you name it, hand sanitizer. That was another big purchase that we had to make. And the third one was signs. And you had every organization, right? Picking up their phone, and speaking to the printers who would normally do their signs. And the conversation went something like this. We need signs. <laughs> we, need, we, need, we need signs. How many? Um, 300. Three, we need 300 signs. We need, them. we need them for the bathroom. We need them for the back of the toilet door. We need them on the floor. We need them on the ceiling. We need them on the carpet. We need them on the walls and the windows. Can we get some ones over the windows? We need signs. We need signs. And what do those signs say? Two meters. Two meters, must be two meters, stay safe. Social distance, two meters, stay two meters apart. And that's what we did. That's what we did when something like this happened and we, we, we had to react very quickly. We had to go and get signs. That is good service. You're providing a service to your teammates, your colleagues, but also your customers. But how many people truly sat down and thought, can we deliver a greater experience? We're getting these signs, but can we do something to deliver a greater experience? How many of us actually sat and thought about delivering a better service? So anyhow, there are three types of signs. This is the first one, and many of you will have seen this. So you'll have the very famous uh, chemist business, uh, retail business, Boots. You can imagine the conversation. We need signs. We'll have let shop safe. Can we have two people that don't look like people, but put two people, two meters, and we'll get, can you get our logo in there? And can you also get the boots blue, right? And we'll have thousands and thousands of those. That's good, I get it. There is another level. This is good, let me show you something great. For any music enthusiasts, this is the sign, that I, the photograph that I took outside of the Hard Rock Cafe in Edinburgh when we could travel back in the day, back after lockdown one. Uh, and it's in the shape of a guitar. Am I the only one excited about this? Is it just me? <laughs> just right. Okay, well, I thought it was good. Anyhow, that's great. What about this one? Can you see the difference? Can you see the difference? This is the Kate Spade retail store. It's just a sign. It's just a sticker. It's not, it's an opportunity to deliver a better experience. And for all of the negativity that we're surrounded by, we see this, what do we do? Smile, we laugh. We may take a photograph and we may share it around the world. Nobody ever takes a photograph of a normal sign. See, this is another marketing opportunity. So we have good signs, we have great signs there is also another level. It's called celebrity service. Now, a client of mine who I've worked with many times in uh, Bangkok, Frankfurt, uh, Glasgow and London, uh, an organization called Fraser's, Fraser's Hospitality. You, you might have come across them. They also own Malmaison, Malmaison hotel chain, okay? so. Wonderful organization, they're friends more than clients, if I'm honest with you. And I've worked with Heather a lot for the last few years and we've done a lot of conferences together. And I always challenge everybody in, in my room, in that conference to create moments that can be shared, those Instagrammable moments. During that time of lockdown one, when we saw the, the guitar and the, you know, the, the, the hard rock cafe image, 
we stayed at Fraser's, but we also stayed at Malmaison. We had, we had a few days up in Edinburgh. We got to the Malmaison front door. We opened the door, hand sanitizers there. The first sign that we saw on the floor, I was like, that's brilliant. I took a photograph and this is what I took. It didn't stop there. This is outside of every lift. If we have any Spice Girls fans in, in, in the room right now, Derek, they will, they will be singing that in their head. And also by the sinks in the toilets. It's just words. It's just words. But it's a different level of service. Did we stop and will we stop? And in future, will we actually look to stop to think about delivering a better experience? The likes of the Malmaison and Fraser certainly did. So I wanted to share that one with you um, for, for, for today. But also the, the teams, the teams as well. And we've seen wonderful examples of, of people who have delivered way and, above, uh, way, way and above everybody else. And this is another client of mine that I want to share with you now. Now, Quickly, put in the chat, put in the chat, uh, or, or come off and, and, and shout, name the movie. Can you name the movie? Well, I can't, Jeff, but I'm not a great movie fan, so we'll see who the movie fans are. Do we have any chat? Can we get in the chat? Yeah, the chat box is open, so people can go in the chat oh. straight away. Come on. The one with Tom Hanks. <gasps> who said that? Who said that? That's Janice from San Francisco. Janice, well, well done, Tom Hanks. So yes, this is the ball. Can you remember what the ball was called? No, oh, sorry. Wilson. Wilson. Brilliant, brilliant. So this is the movie Cast Away. Uh, this, is, uh, and this is Wilson, Wilson the ball. Now, for those of you who haven't seen it, you have to go and see the movie because otherwise this next three minutes will make no sense. So just- it's a great movie. Hours. So this is Wilson from the movie Cast Away. Uh, one of my clients, Village Hotels, uh, and you, you'll, you'll be aware of this in the very first sort of, you know, when, when everything was, was starting last uh, March and April, just about every hotel were, were closing down, closing down. The ones that were open were, were, were for key workers, but everybody else was closing down. But there were only two people allowed, and there was only had to be one, two people in every hotel that had to close. First was maintenance. And you had to have a maintenance person in a hotel who were living in the hotel, who every day turned on the taps, turned on the shower and flushed the toilets in every room just to keep the system going. So there was the maintenance person. The other person was the general manager. So you've got tens and tens of staff leaving on furlough or, or leaving to work from home. And there was two people left in that ginormous hotel by themselves. So Tracy Colley, at Village in the Wirral in the northwest of England, she bought a load of balls and she put and she created Wilson handprints because her teammates were cast away by themselves. And she put these and she dotted them all around Village just to put a smile on their face. But she went a bit further. Before she had to leave, she went along every corridor and took out the photos and the pictures from every frame. And she did things like this. <laughs> so yeah, you know, the famous hotel from, from The Shining, you know, she just created a bit of fun and a bit of intrigue. And, and just to say to her colleagues, we're still here with you. We're still here with you. We, we, we can email, we can phone, but you just did something a little bit different. So we can do something different to put a smile on our customers' faces, but we can also do something for the team. Now, last year, in, in the depths of lockdown two, I believe it was, because we, we go by numbers, I, um, I created a series of videos. I uh, created a series of videos called Welcome Back, the Celebrity Service Welcome Back Strategy. And are we going to welcome back our customers in, in a greater way? Because service wasn't great to start with. And I created a series of videos. I sent them out to all my clients. They're on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. 
and uh, I was just putting out content out, out there. One of my clients, uh, Spec Savers, who I work with quite a lot in the UK, um, a gentleman called Brad Parks, he called me up and he said, Jeff, he said, I'm loving the videos. Thank you very much. It's really helped. But rather than just welcome back customers, there's a big thing here about welcoming back staff, the ones coming back off furlough. And he said, look, I genuinely thought everybody would be so happy and so delighted to be back. And so I'm phoning them up and say, you know, next Monday, back in, great. And he said, Jeff, the staff are really concerned. They're nervous because it's still out there and we're so close to, to, to patients. And he said they were very nervous. And he said it felt like they were saying to him, it's like the first day back at school. And they are very nervous. He said, so I took inspiration from your videos. And he said, this is what I've done. He said, knowing that Derek is going to return to us on Monday, what I'm going to do is I'm going to phone up Janice. I'm going to phone up Tim. And he phoned up all of Derek's colleagues in store and said, give me the one word that would sum up Derek. Of course, he's got 20 to 30 words. He does this for every member of the staff. But what he does was something sensational. He created, framed, um, personalized pictures for all of the staff. But inside, and when you look at it, inside were all of the words that people loved about them. And he said, Jeff, the first thing that they would do when they came in is they would see their own name on the wall and every key word that people think about them. He said it gave them such a high. He said it was a wonderful thing to do. Thank you for the videos. And it's now going through spec savers worldwide. He said, I've put this idea together. They love it. It's now going across worldwide. I could sit here all day, Derek, and talk about the ideas from Celebrity Service. I just wanted to sort of focus today on the love. Things are always going to go wrong. That's life. But it's what we do as a person, as a team, as a brand, to sort of just stop and say, can we deliver a better service experience? And it can be a sign, it can be something personalized like this, it can be something wacky and fun in the office, but always see the opportunities to create a greater service in the toughest of times. So I just wanted to share with you those ideas with you today. Happy with any questions or anything you've got to, to say, but I just wanted to show, share with you those few ideas tonight. Thank you so much for listening. Jeff, that was fantastic. Thank you so much for doing that. If you could stop your screen share of the slides, then everyone will come up in the gallery view and I can see who might have some questions before we stop the recording. So that would be great. And uh, I can remember when we were on the board of the uh, Professional Speaking Association, you came up with some fabulous ideas to uh, take the uh, Speaking Association forward. And uh, I seem to remember that we changed the name of the conference to uh, Mega, or should should I say you did, it was your your idea and people need ideas yeah. and then the ideas need to be, the ideas need to be actioned, don't they? That's the biggest issue, people have ideas, but then they, then they don't take action. Um, I seem to remember there were a couple of other things that you did, but I can't quite remember them at the moment, Jeff, while I'm waiting for a question um, in the box. I think the big the big thing what we did back in the day, you and I, Derek, was you know, just it's just, just communications, you know, just communications and, and social media was almost in its infancy back then. We, we had certain groups launching, but communications from head office um, was 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 crucial, but also the branding as well, the branding of all of this um, and, and, and putting a stamp on to say this is big. So me and you can me and you when we did this for two, three years solid would go around as a pair into various regions and really inspire people to go, this is the event. This is why it's worth joining. And we put incentives in there. We would, anybody who joins tonight, there's a copy of my book. And you've just got to, you've just, yeah. you've got, a yeah. of, you've got to have, a, you have that passion, Derek, which I know it can be negative at times in people's minds, but you have that passion, but really believe in, in, in not what you're selling, but what you've got. I think that was that was that was key for me and you. But to have a brand with it, to create some content around it, 
you and I were putting out videos. We got speakers to create videos, small vox pops of what people were going to get. And as soon as we, you leave and that sort of stops, it's a bit of a shame, isn't it? Because we, we built something, but we had the fun. I mean, the, be, had before, the fun. I, before I stop the recording, Jeff, the one thing I was thinking about was we put in the minds of the speakers that they were making a massive difference oh. to the audiences. So if you had an audience of five or an audience of 500, you had a responsibility to get the audience to take action and make a massive difference and mentor and coach other people and that that was awesome and i know a lot of people never got that did they they just thought they were speaking to earn money uh, and speaking about themselves but that's life it's all about the customer it's all about the difference that makes the difference at the end of the day um jeff ram your book is uh, selling well on amazon i know it's uh, you've got four books out there celebrity services superstars for anyone watching this on youtube or the Negotiators podcast, listening to it. Jeff, how do people get in touch with you? Oh, in, in any way. I mean, it's not, not the hardest name to, to Google and to find me. So you can go to the mothership, which is jeffram.com. That's that's the website. But Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, all of, all of the usual places. It's certainly, if you'd like to connect, great. And the books, you can get them from me direct. If you want signed copies in lovely sparkly envelopes. Oh, you can get them on Amazon. And the superstars, that's, again, it's another one of those things from the last 18 months, Derek. I, I started to write it in lockdown one because I knew I would have the time. And I launched it in January of this year. And as it currently stands, my publisher told me just the other day that it's the only 100% five-star rated customer service book on Amazon. Congratulations, Jeff. So I'm pretty happy with that. Last thing, where did you get the idea that the lady loves milk tray to send those Christmas gifts out? And go on, <laughs> how many did you send out? Or would you rather not say that? No, no, that's fine. That's fine. What Derek's referring to there is, so for 20, well, just about 20 years in business, um, every Christmas, if a client has booked me to speak, or I've done work with clients, if, I, if a client, if, if I've got the event manager, that client has booked me to speak, so like so SEMA that we did, um, whoever it is, Every Christmas time, without fail, I would send them a gift. A gift. Now, I think we all do that, babies. Um, but the gift I would send, uh, I didn't just go online and send something that's too easy. And too easy. But I would go and I would get a box and I would fill it full of the, of the selection boxes, the Christmas, you know, all the Christmas sweets and chocolates you would remember as a kid. The stuff that would put a big smile on your face. And I would fill it. So Grace and I would go to the supermarket. We'd buy tons of chocolate, fill the boxes. Um, I, had a, I had a card. I always handwrite the card to every single client. It takes ages. It costs money. It doesn't matter. Um, and I send out. So I think this year I sent I think about 45, maybe it's about 45 boxes out. Um, and they invariably... 99% of the people who book me are in a team. Now, gifts-wise and presence-wise, to say, and all I'm doing, Derek, is saying thank you for the business. Thank you for booking me this year. So clients who booked me last January, uh, this January, March, April, last week, they would get the gift. Because it's a box full of lots and lots of things, the whole team can share it. You know, in, 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 in years gone by, you, 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 there's a bottle of whiskey. There's a bottle of champagne. There's a, you know, and it was almost a one-to-one -one gift. Yeah, it doesn't work. The, team, the team would have no benefit. So there's reasons why I've done it. I've done it now for 20 years. I've done all sorts of things over the years. The chocolate boxes are a big one. Uh, and I just enjoy doing it. I think it's great, Jeff. And what reminded me of that was I saw um, I saw one of them on Instagram yesterday getting lots and lots of likes. So, you know, it's uh, you get the social media kickback as well because people can't resist putting it on. Jeff Ram, thanks so much for joining us. Fantastic ideas that you've Thank given you. us that we should all be doing. We know we don't always do them, but, um, you know, fantastic. Congratulations on the book. Congratulations on everything you do. And thanks for joining Monday Night Live. Yet again, I hope you'll join us in 2022. Thanks very much, Jeff Ram. And can you give Jeff the usual round of applause virtually? Fantastic. Thank you, Jeff Ram. Okay, I've... Um...